Hi everyone. I wanted to go over your background paper uh, so you could hear it and see the directions at the same time. So if you are working alone, you will submit two documents, as it says right here. That would be your reference list and then your outline. Your reference list is separate from your outline. Do not submit them together. It slows down the grading process, and I need to have them separate also for uh, plagiarism issues. Your reference list right here has a minimum of three strong, relevant, and professional sources. And the, those sources should be looking at COVID, COVID-19, your population, uh, how your population reacts to vaccinations, what does the literature say. At the most, I will accept 12 sources. Um, as I said in class, the more is not necessarily better. I'm looking for strong, high quality sources or references. You do not get more points because you have more sources. Your po points are assigned based on the quality of the sources you are using. Your outline should include the major headings that would be appropriate for your topic. As I said, in the real world, it's highly unlikely your supervisor will ask you for a written five to 10 page paper on your research on a topic but it's extremely likely that they will ask you to outline what you've learned and what you plan to do. So you're going to be researching this at the level of a 400 level class. Your outline should prepare you to actually write a paper. That's the level of detail and the depth of content I'm looking for. So make sure your outline turns out to be an outline that you could use to write a paper for a 400 level class. If it's not in depth and I don't know what you know, then you will lose points. Um, again, the purpose of this is to demonstrate that you have ample research on your topic so that you can provide an accurate presentation to your population. The amount of content in this outline is greater than what you put in your presentation. So just to be clear one more time, you are doing this for your population. And again, it's at the college level. There's a sample provided at the end of these set of directions. Your outline must include in-text citations from the reference list that you're submitting. So you'll have a reference list in APA format, and you will have an outline with in-text citations. Hopefully you saved uh, a book from Health 315, uh, so you know how to do APA correctly, because you'll lose points for that. Um, APA 7 is easier than APA 6 but because it's just transitioning this year, I will accept APA 6. Um, and if you don't have a book, then hopefully you have a good source. At this point in time, Towson University's library is better than Purdue Al for APA citations. We also have a librarian who specializes in the College of Health Professions, and she can also help you with your APA. You may work in groups of two to three people. <clears throat> um, if you choose to work with two to three people in your group, you and one other or you and two others, I want you to review directions and the announcements on how to make group work most effective. If you work in a group, only one person submits the assignment um, and so the assignment would be the reference list and your outline, two documents, but everyone in the group submits the peer review form. <clears throat> so one person in your group submits the assignment, reference list, and their peer review form, and everyone in the group submits a peer review form. And this is so I can, if there's a part of the outline that is inferior to the rest, I want to know who did it. 
Um, and there are times when different people in a group receive different grades. When it's apparent that one or more people work at a different level than the other person in the group, it is very possible that different people receive different grades. So here's a scoring rubric to go over it. Lots of times people find this as punitive, but I find this a gift to you. If you follow directions, if you have APA sources and you use correct APA format, you will have acquired eight points. And if you have no spelling and grammar errors, you'll have another four points. So if you just do those four things and your entire outline is a disaster, you'll have 12 points. I do this in every assignment. I see it as a gift because at your level, you should be able to follow directions. You should have good sources. You should have strong APA and you should not have spelling and grammar errors. So just those, those things get you 12 points. Um, the next item, it's set, your outline is set up correctly and has all the major topics that it should cover. Um, by set up correctly, I want it to look like an outline. I don't want it to look like an essay. I do not take off points if you don't have Roman numerals or other numerals or the letters aren't capital or small letters. I, that doesn't matter to me. You can just bullet the whole thing. Um, I'm looking that it's set up correctly like an outline. It looks like an outline and not an essay. Um, and you have topics covered. Um, that is worth 15 points. This is yes to the topics, but for example, if there's three topics, of course it would be more points, but it comes to a total of 15. You start at 15. You have in-text citations where you should have them and that's worth three points. So again, let me just highlight these items. These items are simply doing what a senior should be able to do in college, and that comes to 15 points out of the 30. Again, if you just do these things, you will start at a 50% of your points, and then the rest of it comes from here, from your content in your outline. I, I see this again as a gift. I see this as here are 15 points I'm basically giving you because you're gonna do an awesome job on this. And then if you make mistakes on the content, that doesn't affect your grade as much as it could if it, everything were content. So here's a here is an example of what an average outline might look like for HIV. So the description of the community or population, and you need to actually put that in there. These are just ideas of what would be there. Disease concepts, it's communicable, explain how it uh, transmits. Um, so these are different ways. Um, historical and importance information for um, HIV, risk factors, safe sex behaviors. So I need to know that you know what you're doing. If you just said um, <clears throat> communicable and you didn't actually get more specific about how communicable it's spread, you would lose points. So again, this is for AIDS. It's a topic that you're not doing, but I want to show you what I'm expecting from you. And so you need to think this through. And I don't tell you exactly what you need. You all have different groups. You all are taking different approaches. But the content, again, needs to be at a 400 level course so that if I asked you to write a paper, you could whip out your outline and write it from the outline. So those are the directions. If you have any questions, please make sure you ask. Let me see if I can get to the peer scoring rubric. Okay, so the top part here, this top section is an example. It's, you know, these are examples. But what I'm looking for is who did APA format, who did spelling and grammar, who researched, list the topics of that each person researched. 
If there's three people in your group, there's at least three different topics that should be in your outline. Who did the proofing um, and who made the final submission? If you put all, I will take off points because somebody has to be in charge. So let's say one person researches the population, one person uh, researches COVID-19, and one person researches vaccinations then over here I would see those names attached to those people. Realize that if one person does APA formatting, spelling and grammar and proofing and somebody else does all the research, you will not get equal grades. Everybody needs, everybody in your group needs to be involved in some type of research for your outline. So you will fill in who did it and you must give each other a letter grade. I am the only person who sees this but it gives me an idea of what happened in your group. So again, for example, this says how to conduct a needs assessment I did, what, uh, how, we, how we did our own needs assessment Susie Q did, and then there's a grade and a slight narrative explaining why you came up with that grade. This is to help me. And then at the bottom it says, do you want to work with this person again? Why or why not? You list the person's name and why or why not you'd want to work with them again. And again, this gives me an idea of what happened in your paper. So this is for the background. It's there. You have the scoring tool, the background peer review, and I will add this um, lecture to this area as well. If you have any questions, please make sure you ask in advance. I look forward to seeing you in class next week. Bye-bye, everybody.